The Catholics of Oz is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to episode 71 of The Catholics of Oz. The Catholics of Oz is a show where we discuss faith, culture, and what's been happening from an Aussie perspective. Whether it's sinners or science, apostolates and apps, providence or productivity, you can hear it right now on The Catholics of Oz. Hello, I'm Lindsay Sant. Welcome to episode 71 of The Catholics of Oz, our first one for 2022. A little bit delayed and we'll talk about why in a moment. But before I do, joining me today is uh, Lido Sabol. He's the only person joining me today. There's only cricket. <laughs> only crickets coming from where Caroline is because she's not oh, here yet. Oh, yeah, oh, we'll talk oh. about why. But Lido, how are you going? I'm doing well, Lindsay. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, 2022. It's me. Okay, we're going to say this every year, but 2021, where did that go? It was so fast. Ooh. I don't know. We're kind of locked up for most of it, so I'm not I sure. Think it was again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, do we? Can we say that I don't know that we've done time now after having you know two I, years of on and off I, lockdowns, you know some pretty big ones. I think so, man. I yeah. think so. I think I think if we go locked down again, <coughs> I'm sorry to say we might have some riots going on in Melbourne. <laughs> Not again, sorry, but you know yeah. whatever. I think there, it will be everyone will be up in arms going. Yeah. Why are we in lockdown? And I think it's more the or the for the, the economy as well and jobs mm. and everything. And it's yeah. hard. It's been hard. And um, I've been seeing it on news about supplies as well. And um, <laughs> it was something I was going to do shopping online. And uh, when you look at the supplies, oh my goodness, there's nothing much left on there. Yeah, supply, supply chain's been an issue. I think that's exactly. um, happening in a lot of places around the world, just with the um, the Omicron wave as it is. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's made, you know, uh, obviously a lot of people ill as we try to open up now. Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so where we are in Australia at the moment now, for anyone who's not in Australia, uh, lockdowns are uh, basically have been told that lockdowns are not part of the plan anymore. So mm, the the mm. um the drive is to open up. Um, I hope they're doing the right thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know yeah, I mean? that's I, true. I, that's true. I, I can't say I have an opinion on. I don't want to be locked down again. I definitely don't want to be because it's um mm, you know obviously mm. there are other costs associated with locking down. You know, there's the benefit is that the virus doesn't spread and. Uh, you know, less mm. people end up in hospital because of it and things like that. But the um the the flip side of that is all the other things. You know, there's mental health, um, missing out on opportunities, not being able to do things. You know, yeah. you know there's um you know obviously not being free to do other things that we'd normally do in life. Um, you know, routines, exactly. habits, hobbies, all that kind of stuff. So exactly. You know, and talking to people that you love on Skype all the time. All yeah, day, so. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You, you won't be able yeah. to um visit your family and friends you yeah know, and you, you try to keep, keep on contact with them yeah and um <laughs> also i think um i think at the moment for us in victoria here in melbourne in australia yeah. um i think we're doing sort of a personal lockdown <laughs> yeah <laughs> we don't uh, want to get it has been reported much, yeah, yeah. That some people have just been staying at home because uh omicron yeah. so we had a we uh we had a summer of omicron here in victoria and oh, new south wales is very yeah. similar um, and some other states around Australia, to a lesser degree, that have had a spike in cases too. But um, mm, mm. yeah, we yeah we were seeing very very high numbers of cases and very high spread of Omicron. And how do you know that it's going getting everywhere? Is when my family gets it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because if my family, so yeah, so my family, uh, we had uh, Omicron. The, we had a visit from Omicron uh, during January. So about uh, just before mid January, mm, we all mm, uh, we all contracted COVID as well. And I've been saying to a few a few close friends that uh, if it made it to us, that means it's everywhere because we've been pretty careful. You know, yeah, like we, we haven't locked ourselves in, but um, mm, but at mm. the same time, you know, we've been only visiting outdoor venues. We've we've really limited some of the things that we do. Exactly. Um, mm, yeah, mm. but uh, yeah, we had a we had a you know it wasn't a massive party. We only oh, had, no, yeah, you know, was it was it uh, about fifteen people ish roughly people. at my place? Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. You know, just exactly. just to celebrate that I've gone around the sun 40 years <laughs> yeah. and, and that Damien has gone around the sun 13 years. He's entered his, you know, teenage, you know, teenage years yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And we got unlucky, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> okay. that's, it's the possible source because from that, from that day, quite mm -hmm. a few people ended up with COVID. <laughs> so oh. we had an Omicron party, not a birthday party. <laughs> oh, Lindsay. Oh, yeah. ouch. Yeah. 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 
How are you feeling? Yeah. How are you and your family feeling now? Liz? Yeah, everyone's good. Mm. Uh, thankfully, um, uh, the things that we were worried about um, didn't eventuate. So uh, we mm. were really worried mm. about Alexander uh, because <laughs> you know, yeah. because he's had issues in the past where um, due to developing asthma that he has uh, when he's when he's had colds in the past. Yeah, I've mm. talked about the hospital trips and everything. And, you know, in previous episodes, you know, it wasn't mm. last year, but the year before. Um, and he does sometimes when he gets a cold, it flares up his asthma. He gets quite sick. Oh yes. Um, yeah. And we have learned to manage it you know, over the years. So it's been less severe, you know, thanks to you know help from from doctors and you know mm. um, developing asthma plans and having puffers and preventers and all kinds of exactly. you know, wonderful medical marvels that we have to help <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. So we're Definitely. we're able to mitigate you know the the illness that he has now. Mm. Uh, we were we weren't sure because COVID is an unknown. It's not a cold. It's co- COVID is a you know it's a yeah, whole other yeah. you know disease there. Exactly. Uh, but mm. thankfully, Alexander, he just for one or two days he felt a bit warmer than usual. Um, mm. But his attitude didn't change. You know, when he's sick, if his attitude changes, you know it's not good. Exactly. Yeah, when yeah. he's up, you know, if he's yeah. mopey and crying and wants hugs all the time, or if he sleeps unusually during the day, that then you know he's not well. Mm. But mm. none of that eventuated, thankfully. Um, yep. Uh, so he yep. just played and it was just being his normal self. Mm-hmm. Um, Damien, 13 year old, he had one day where he felt a bit nauseous and wasn't eating properly okay. uh, and okay. felt a bit, felt a bit warm, feverish. And then he yeah. was fine after that. And Isabel and I were miserable. <laughs> we were sick. Oh, yeah. Right, it was like, right. it was like the worst kind of flu that you could have. Ooh, uh, yeah, but definitely. I, I think, uh, and you know, hopefully possibly cause we're vaccinated uh, well, double vaxxed at the moment anyway, we're. We'll, move, we'll hopefully get our, our booster soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. But um, I think there were three days where we were really unwell. Um, yep. So, so the way it worked is uh, the, on, the, um, uh, so on the Tuesday of the week that we were, that we were sick, mm-hmm. uh, I'd been out in our pergola um, doing some work because I'm, mm. I've been digging out all this soil that's between the, between the pathway and the pergola and the fence. There's about, mm. you know, like 60 centimeters of, you know, between the fence, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so I've been digging out some soil so I could, you know, lay out some, you know, some really tough weed mats and then, you know, put some stones in there and make it look nice, you know. So, cool, cool. Um, yeah. So I'd started that and uh, I'd worked pretty hard and it was a warm day. So it was, you know, oh, Aussie yeah, summer. Was, so right? yeah. now I was undercover, thankfully, but it was still hot. You know, there was still yeah, heat and everything. It was very humid. Yeah. The so heat that we usually heat we have. Yeah. Yeah. So I was digging all day and moving, you know, moving lots of soil and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, listening to some audiobooks, which was good past the time. But I'd been out for pretty much the whole day doing that. So by the end of the day, I was wrecked. <laughs> I was really of pretty course it would tired, be. Yeah. you know, yeah. sore arms, the whole lot, you know, sore mm. body and everything. Mm. And the next day I woke up with, you know, with a rotten headache. I was not feeling good. Yeah, yeah, And so, yeah. so Isabel said, <laughs> yeah, I got the, uh, I got the, um, the lecture. So, See, I told you if you push yourself too hard, <laughs> you're going to get sick. And that's what happened. So she was giving me that, you know, like, you know, you know, things like that. I said, I'm so sorry, dear. I thought I was pacing myself. She's like, no, you did it. You did it. Um, and I, yeah, I was pretty much miserable all day. But then mm. Isabel was feeling a bit unwell too. Oh, uh, yeah. And, okay. and, and then we started hearing, you know, this person saying, oh, I got COVID. That person saying, oh, all these people oh, that we'd no. been with yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah, over yeah. the last couple of days. Couple um, days, yeah. Because it wasn't just the party. It was the day before the party as well that we'd been with, you know, like with someone who had it. It was the day after the party that we So we had basically oh. had three days of exposure, so we had no chance at oh, all. No. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. all close family that we were with. It wasn't, you know, we weren't going out and visiting, <laughs> yep. you know, um, anyone else really or anything. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, oh. basically, yeah, three days of just feeling really rotten. Um, we we did all the testing and everything, so used rapid tests, and Isabel had a PCR test. Uh, there's a whole story to that, which it will just take too long to go into in this podcast. Wow. But, yep. Yeah. Um, yep. But basically, I was uh, so we'd be given a bunch of rapid tests at the testing site, um, and. We got home and I felt like a. I, I became the um the nurse. I was doing. I was swabbing everyone. So when, yeah. when we went there, um the the uh, the guy who triaged us said, uh, when take these rapid tests home. Said now when you swab, swab like the tonsils as well. Even though the instructions don't say to don't say the to tonsils? do it. Swab the tonsils. Yeah. Oh my goodness, um, that's right down your throat, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, you know, almost, like yeah. a little bit, a little bit behind the punching oh, bag. Really? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my technical term there. The punching bag. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Right so, down um, there. Yeah. 
Caroline's going to hear this episode and groan. I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sure great. No, yeah. it's still look cool like that, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Caroline. Yes, I know yeah. that. We know that. Look, <laughs> since I was a kid, I called it the punching bag. So that's what it's going to remain, right? <laughs> yeah, I've never exactly. punched it. Exactly. I've never punched yeah. it, but yeah, that's the, yeah. So, uh, wow. yeah, so I was, I, I, you know, I did the kids. I did Isabel. Yeah. I did myself. Mm-hmm. I was swabbing everyone. But every, you know, for three tests, it was just two big, bright, dark lines, you know, bright Thanks. dark, yeah, pretty, two dark lines. Yeah. Wow. Was, yeah. Confirmed yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is why we're feeling terrible. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I, yeah. I think the symptoms were pretty bad for three days. Uh, wow. It was just like mm. a really intense flu. Uh, and mm. then after the, that, it started to, to taste subside. and smell. Yeah, we didn't lose taste or smell. We were okay, oh, thankfully. Oh, right. Yeah. So some people have different symptoms. Uh, different right? symptoms, yeah. yeah. Um, wow, I was wow, mostly wow. headaches, fever, yeah. um, really congested in the head. <laughs> like I was I was down in cold and flu tablets. Like, you wouldn't believe to I can imagine, suppress mate. Yeah, the symptoms. Because yeah. the symptoms are pretty... Like, they got intense for a while. They are pretty ugly. Ooh, yeah. Um, never. I was never worried about... Um, it, it getting worse, but it was just mm. bad for three days. Yeah, like yeah, like 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 flus that I've had in the past. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thankfully, so thankfully, it was no no worse than that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, after those three days, the symptoms started to subside, uh, and then basically it was just having no energy. So that was the Definitely. worst part. Was the energy levels took you know another week to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at this stage, I'm feeling good. Um, yep. I've been, I've added some, some hopefully it's for, for a good reason, but I've t- started taking some multivitamins in the morning just to, just to give yeah. me a bit, of a bit of a kick because, uh, you know, like the, any, I actually feel less energy if I don't take them and that might be psychological. I don't know if it's a placebo oh, yeah, thing, you, it could but be both, at the moment, mate, I, but at the moment working, I just feel like I need yeah, them. So yeah, I'm just, working, yeah. Use them. Yeah, I'm also 40, so maybe that's the other reason. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back when we were young, we used to okay, yeah. um, take on vitamin C tablets before going to school. Yeah, see, I yeah. remember that too. Yeah, do you know that? And it's like yeah. uh, they were like lollies. Yeah, it tastes like lollies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was all right. Yeah, <laughs> we took them in. Oh, it worked. And you yeah. could probably just get a cold for for a day or so, and then you back to school again. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll, we'll have to take that back again, Lizzie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and at this point, I should mention, yeah, that uh, Caroline is not with us uh, for this mm. episode. So she yeah. um, she had COVID as well. Interestingly, she didn't come to the party and she hadn't seen us at all. So we're not wow. sure where she got. And this is the thing. Mm. We, we assume the party or someone else that we saw is the reason, but we just don't know uh, where, exactly. we, where we got it from. Because exactly. you know, so, um, some of the people we know who have it, the lines of connection aren't necessarily clear. So mm, the point mm, is that a whole ton of us had it uh, at that time. So exactly. Caroline, yeah, Caroline's doing well. She's, she's recovering. Um, mm, so mm, she's mm. done pretty well, but she just needs some rest at the moment. So she asked if yeah. she could take this, this one off. So we said no problem yeah, so that she can rest. Yeah. And, uh, and, and apologies to all of our listeners because we didn't record an episode. We were meant to have an episode out two weeks ago, mm, but because mm. Caroline and I were both <laughs> really sick, <laughs> we just... And yeah. I can't do the podcast on my own, guys. Like, I don't think Dom will let me... Just oh, in case, come on, Leo. Know, if, yeah. I, if I did it by myself, I'll be sound like a radio, you know. Yeah. Welcome lots, to it. <laughs> yeah, and lots of he man. Catholics of Oz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming from Australia. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm so lonely. <laughs> yeah. All those little things, and they go, Dom will go, you know, just. No, <laughs> yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> but it, it's good to be back and, um, and we're yes, looking forward is. to, this, this is the show's fourth year. So the show is, yes. is now four years old. So yes, yes, uh, yeah. we're really excited to be, uh, to do another year of podcasting for SQPN. Yes. Uh, and we're so grateful that we've had the opportunity to this point to be able to do this mm. and, uh, and to be back. And I, I did miss it. I was very sad that we couldn't record two weeks ago and, and, um, and provide that to our listeners, but we're back and yes. we're going to be with you throughout the year. Um, and, uh, yep. if you've had COVID in the past and you're listening, we, now we, we're a part of that club and, um, <laughs> and I've got to say, and I think anyone who's had it would, yes. would not wish it on anyone. No, and I, I, I don't, I, and I do hope, um, that you avoid it, but if you do get it, listen to the show because we're here with you in, uh, uh spiritually and, uh, we're offering our comfort and our prayers for anyone who is ill. Um, and for the numbers of people that have ended up in hospital here in Australia, there's been quite a few, yeah, there's been a few uh, in the yeah. Omicron wave. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So we'll all look out for each other. So let's, uh, let's get this show on the road, Lino. Yep. And before we do, uh, just mm. want to uh, remind everyone, first of all, if you're new to, if you've just discovered the show, welcome. Hope you stick around with us. Um, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, 
your favorite podcast player. The show's on Spotify as well. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast player and some feedback. Spotify allows that now as well. So we, we've uh, discovered through the network that that happens. So if you want to give us a promo on Spotify, we'd love that. Uh, so positive feedback helps us to reach new people. And don't forget that SQPN also hosts all of its shows on YouTube. So you can search SQPN on YouTube, subscribe there, hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes are released. And you can also listen to all the other great shows on SQPN as well. And there's some great content. I've been listening to, to some different, especially while I've been sick <laughs> when nothing else to do. So I've been catching up on, catching up on quite a few shows that I'm behind with. And um, yeah, I've been really enjoying it. I want to throw out a shout out to Secrets of Star Wars this time around because I've been mm. loving the Boba Fett series, which I'll talk about later on. Mm. And uh, their analysis has really helped me to, to get a little bit deeper uh, into what's going on. And at, point, at time of recording... For anyone who knows, who's been watching it, uh, episode five was the episode that came out uh, this week, and I can't wait to hear their commentary because it was amazing, but not for the reasons that anyone would expect, and that's all I'll say, spoiler free, but I'll talk about it more later on. So uh, let's, um, let's give the people some content. We've got some great things to talk about today. So first of all, let's start with Faith Beyond Borders. Well, I'm actually feeling rather good about this. I think we've all arrived at a very special place, eh? Oh. Spiritually, ecumenically. How do you make somebody love you without affecting free will? <laughs> Welcome to my world, son. You come up with an answer to that one, you let me know. Yes, I had to work very hard to pass Latin and theology. Oh, quite. Those are, of course, the most important things. Oh, eh? yeah. This one out, Cap. I don't see how I can. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. So, Lino, uh, this segment, Faith Beyond Borders, we've, uh, we haven't we have really called it that for a while. Like last year when we got locked down, we just put segments it's, aside. We segments aside. Casual, format. casual format. Casual mm-hmm. formats. Yeah, now it's time for us to be professional again. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have my tie and shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so, yeah, I haven't got my business card here with me or anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Faith Beyond Borders, we like to pick up stories of people who have use their faith beyond the borders of the church. So try um, sharing some examples of evangelization uh, in any way possible. And people that we, that we discuss, they're not perfect. Uh, and what I love is that nobody claims to be perfect, but they're just doing their best to serve God in the ways that they possibly can with, with what they have. So the context of this is that uh, on Australia Day, Australia, uh, the 26th of uh, of January, I was going to say the 26th of Australia, the 26th of January, <laughs> uh, um, the, they announced the Australian of the Year, and then mm. also there are different categories of categories. Australian of the Year as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So first of all, the really cool thing is that the Australian of the Year this year is Dylan Orcott, mm. who is a retiring wheelchair tennis player. So mm-hmm. he's won, I think it's about 18, 18 Grand Slams. 18 Grand Slams. 18 Grand Slams, a whole yeah. lot of other tournaments, playing, mm. um, playing. Uh, I, I think they call it quad tennis. but it, I think it's quad t- yeah. tennis or wheelchair. I think it's yeah. quad now. It's because he's quad now. Mm. Yeah, that's what I heard mm. the, um, the, the host mm. calling it. But uh, mm. he unfortunately lost his, his, last, um, his, his last match last before he retired. Last Grand Slam yeah. here in ha- Melbourne. However, but he, however yeah. yeah. He'd been to Canberra, hadn't he? Just that week, so yeah, uh, just a day or two thing. before, he'd gone to Canberra, yeah, Canberra. to, you know, to be announced as the Australian announced, of the Year. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he obviously had a very busy schedule and everything after that. And then he had exactly. to play a final and a Grand Slam. Final and a Grand Slam, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it was a good match. He, yes, uh, his he opponent, was. also just a beautiful person. Um, yeah. You know, uh, just the way that they both spoke um, uh, after the, the last match. It was, a, it was, an, it was a, a beautiful thing to better watch his, you know, his last ever, um, you know, tennis match. Mm. Uh, mm. And the things that he said um, were all amazing. He was just full of gratitude. He, I don't think, I, I think he didn't want to lose, but I don't think that he cares that he lost. Yeah, Because, exactly. you know, he was capping mm. off a great career. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. And just the praise that he had for his opponent and everything, was, um, yeah, it was wonderful. Yep. So, I mean, exactly. that, that's really good. So we're going to have, a great year of because uh, what happens then is for a year the uh, the Australian of the year will advocate for their cause. So exactly, uh, we had um, uh, the one of them was a teacher a couple of years ago. Uh, was it? Oh, I'm see, I'm mixing his name up now because oh, okay. so 
because uh, I've, it's not James Wu because James Wu is like a director or an actor or something. But it's <gasps> yeah, uh, James Wu is a, yeah, but, he's an actor. But, yeah, but yeah. it was oh, so I'm gonna say Mr. Wu because the teacher. I forgot his first name because it's, okay, okay. it's been a few years yep. now. Um, yep. It was pre-lockdown. But you know, he was a maths teacher. who was really passionate. Australian of the year. So he spent a year promoting teaching and maths and uh, you know, and he became he uh, he was noticed because he recorded. Uh, he was recording his lessons and sharing them out, for, and it wasn't yeah. just his his students who were watching them, but it was students around Australia and around the world. So, oh, awesome! Yeah, and yep. you know, he was promoting education, very passionate, also a very Christian man as well, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, last year was Grace Tame, and she uh, was an advocate for uh, for women, especially women who were survivors of sexual assault. And so she domestic was bringing, violence? Uh, not domestic violence. This was, uh, this oh, had right. more to okay. do with, um, you know, with abuse. Um, so she, oh, right. so, so okay. her story okay. was that she had been abused by a teacher. Unfortunately, you know, that's a, that's a heartbreaking thing for me mm. being in the profession, but she'd been taken advantage of. Um, and she was, so she, she spent a year, um, challenging the silence around, um, around, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of abuse of women. So, uh, really, okay. obviously, cool. a really important message to share. Yep. Uh, yep. And this year, it's going to be Dylan Orcott's going to be advocating for um, for people with disabilities as disabilities. well, which is great. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that's uh, you know, someone said, oh, maybe we should make him prime minister. And someone else noted, we actually don't have you know ramps and disability access to Parliament House. You know, like oh so wow, there you go, okay. like to you know to the um to the chambers, you know to um you know uh, where all the all the action happens. But then again, who'd want access to Question Time anyway? To be honest, oh, I think oh, so I'm surprised because they were the ones um, the parliament and the government were trying to advocate and make the laneways and our walkways mm. all um, disability um, access accessible. Areas. Yeah, and, there, and there's it, a lot of work that's been there. done. <laughs> yeah, a lot there. of work has oh, been done, but he, okay. he'll highlight where there's more. You know, he's already said, exactly. uh, how about mm. free rapid antigen tests for people with disabilities? Why hasn't that happened? He's already jumped on that oh, yeah. as a, as a wow. cause. So he's already using okay. his voice. Um, and yeah. the thing is, he's a very positive person. He's got a very positive voice. He's yes. very, yes. that kind yes. of friendly personality yeah. that you, you know, you want to listen to him and hear what he has to say. So he'll, he'll, be, a, he'll be a powerful advocate for, um, for, for uh, disability. And I, I think that's great. Exactly. You will. Yeah, another story I want to tell though, Lino, mm. is uh, is that um, so like I said, there are other categories of Australian of the Year. So it's not just one person. There's one main person, and there are the other people who are noticed for their efforts as mm. well. Yep. So Dr. Daniel Noor uh, is um, a Coptic uh, Coptic Christian Catholic. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, but he uh, was announced as the New South Wales Young Australian of the Year, and uh, they call the headline from the Catholic Weekly is "Want Faith." Go to the homeless, says Doctor of the Streets. So let's talk about his story very quickly. So uh, it says here that to find faith, look to the homeless. That's what Daniel Noor, the 26-year-old doctor and New South Wales Young Australian of the Year has uh, found since he launched Streetside Medics. So Streetside Medics' four vans are staffed by almost 150 volunteers and take free medical services to the homeless across New South Wales. And so, while he was, uh, while he has been recognised as the 2022 New South Wales Young Australian of the Year, his own motivation for service is his relationship with God. My views are very much based around my faith, I'd say. Um, and that, so that was, uh, so his his motivation for what he's doing is his faith, which is why he's the topic of our Faith Beyond Borders today. Mm. Um, so he said, uh, in our society, we feel a little bit shy or embarrassed to say I'm a strong Christian. Maybe someone will, rid will ridicule you for that. In the homeless population, it's very different. Many of them are really faith-driven. They always talk about God. I really need God's help. I really need God's strength. Or they'll say, I've stopped drinking thanks to God. It's all Him. So Side Streets Medics is a blessing for many homeless people with conditions ranging from diabetes to heart disease that may, might go undiagnosed otherwise um, and untreated. So some of his patients come seeking treatment for chronic, Ill, uh, chronic conditions of the soul as well as the body. Uh, and he said, I've seen a few people who have come in with a lot of guilt or they've lost hope. Uh, so um, basically what he's done is he's used his gift of medicine. So obviously he's a full-time you know, doctor as doctor. well, mm, but he started this volunteer mm. program to, to go to the streets and help people who are experiencing homelessness with, um, with their medical conditions uh, and also wow. mm. helping them to find conditions that may have gone undiagnosed if they hadn't sought help. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But it's not just that. 
he's also uh, because of because it's a relational thing. They're striking up conversations and they're talking about their lives and they're finding a bit of a bit of spiritual healing through their that relationship as well. Mm. And we've we've talked about it before and how important is it that if you if we want to provide spiritual healing, we need to listen to people. Mm. And and he's out there doing that. He's listening. We don't necessarily have the answers when people say, I've done this, I've done that. But you know, being there to listen is such an important part of that um that process. Pope Francis has been on about this. Pope Francis is not the first one to say it, but he's re-emphasized out the need for us to listen. Uh, but mm-hmm. but such an important thing. Um, you know, look at uh, look at you know, confession as a model. What happens? We talk, and the priest listens. Yeah, exactly. uh, and and really, mm-hmm. you know, you know how mm-hmm. sometimes a priest will provide some spiritual guidance. Mm-hmm. They don't even have to do that in 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 confession. They simply their job is to just, listen and provide. Listen. Yeah, yeah, and and to mm-hmm. give God's you know absolution. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus acts through the through the priest. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, but it's great, you know, obviously I like it when the priest says, you know, try doing this, try doing that, you know, you know, <laughs> um, you know or, or, you know, uh, and but, sometimes I'll offer encouragement. I say, don't give yeah, up, you, you know, um, don't, exactly. be, don't beat yourself up so much, things like that. They're, you mm. know, um, I remember I copped a humbling from a priest in Rome once. <laughs> I, Rome? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, 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 in 2016, we went on holidays and we're at the Vatican and it was during the year of mercy. And I thought, oh, well, you know what? Let's, uh, they're, they're offering confession, might as well go. Yeah. And so, you know, I went, you know, went in um, and, and did confession and the priest, he didn't tell me off, but he's like, you need to rethink the way you're talking about this because you're too hard on yourself. And that was, uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, things like that, you know, they offer things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, that's a, a model, I think, of what he, he's not offering confessions, but what he's doing is he's, uh, he's offering a service. Service. Uh, without an agenda, just simply yeah, just exactly. to, to put his faith into action. Mm-hmm. And one of the great, um, you know, um, flow on effects of that is that people are not just receiving healing for their medical conditions or support for their medical conditions, but they're receiving spiritual help spiritual as well, help which is, as well. which is beautiful. Um, he said one of his patients, a lady in her fifties who had been rough sleeping for seven years after losing her family savings through gambling came to the, yeah. the clinic mm. in Manly. He said mm. she felt so guilty that she left her family. She was just heartbroken I was driving her to hospital because she had a really bad wound that had probably infected her bones. Ooh, yeah, the drive, ouch. the drive over there, uh, we were talking, and I said, "You've got to forgive yourself." And she was in tears, and I'm trying not to go in tears hearing that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, this, that, yeah, yeah. If she, if he hadn't put his faith into action, she wouldn't have had that conversation with him. Yeah, you know, exactly. and isn't that amazing? That this is mm, this mm. is the simplicity of 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 being a Christian is. Uh, you know, we talk about how do I evangelize? How do I evangelize? You don't need to start a massive program. You don't mm. need to start, you know, you don't need to have a, you know, whatever, you know, like spend millions of dollars or whatever. You simply just need to go out and, and talk to and people. Talk to people. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and not talk over people, but but listen like he's done. And he just had, you know, she's obviously told her story and he's provided her this one sentence, which yep. which she yep. needed to hear. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is God acting through through our, our good works. Um, yep. So he he asked her on that drive if she had faith, and she replied that she was a Roman Catholic who used to attend uh, weekly mass. Mm. And he said, just reminding her about her faith, which she believes, alleviated her anxiety a lot, and then started to give her confidence to forgive herself. Mm. We had that conversation four, five, six times, and read the Bible together a few times as well. Mm. Uh, so he said that um, his that patient she's uh, now living in stable housing, working pretty much full time, and has seen marked improvements in her mental and physical health. Mm. It was just mm. reminding her of, her of what she knew, rather than teaching her what she didn't. She didn't. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and there's a beautiful photo of the of the two of them here as well. Um, yeah. In the in that um, in the article, he likens it to the washing of the feet. Right. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, which is great, uh, you know, that act of service. Exactly. You know, I've exactly. given you example that you should also do that. You know that. Um, yeah. You know, that beautiful. Uh, that beautiful line from Jesus about how our faith is, you know, our faith is an act of service. It's it's loving God, glorifying God, and and loving our neighbor. That's the you know the essence of of how to live out faith. Exactly. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um. He said, "I must admit, I'm not the greatest Christian, but side but street side medics gives me the ability to walk the walk." I rarely read my Bible. I try. I rarely pray and was never and never big on fasting. I go to church, but I'm often distracted. So I'm not a good Christian, 
but I've always grown up in the church. My parents serve the community. My mum is quite religious. It all, that happens to a lot of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it always struck me, uh, the story of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. If God washes the feet of his disciples, the least we can do is take care of our homeless. Mm. And there's more to read, and I'll, I'll um, put that in the show notes for, our, um, for, for you as our listeners to uh, to read as well. But Lino, what did you think of, uh, of Daniel Noor's story yourself? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great um, vocation. Here. Is that a, what, what is that right I'm saying? Vocation he has? It, it is. A, it, I mean, our, our vocation is what we feel called to by God. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, and yeah, it can be a priestly vocation, you know, like a, um, an ordained vocation, or it can mm. simply be where we feel our lives. It could be a married vocation. It could yeah, be, exactly. it could be yep. simply um, what we, what we, feel and sense through prayer and discernment, prayer God, discernment. Mm. God is placing for us as the mission of our lives. Exactly. Uh, the, exactly. Or the missions of our lives. What, what mission is mm. God putting for, uh, before us? Because that yeah. mission is being sent, isn't it? It's, it that's yeah, exactly. the whole idea is what yeah. is God, yeah. what, what is God sending me out to do at this particular time in my life? So exactly. yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd call it a vocation for sure. Yeah. It's, and also, um, I think it sort of reminds me when we were doing it back in our youth group days, we, we went to, to do this soup vans things and yeah. we did, well, I think we did a couple of times we did the um the soup kitchens like actually went to the actual kitchen yes yep yeah we served the homeless there and um <laughs> it's a real eye opener mm. and it really shows you um the different not I want to say the different sides of society but you yep. know for us it's like we we got jobs we got a house blah 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 but these people don't and yeah. for us to come and help and and just to be there, and also, like you said, um, to listen to them, yeah, and listen to their what they have to say, what to listen to. Them. It, it's it's amazing, mm. you know. And yeah, it's great what he's doing. And yeah, it, I just it, through, through his faith, that's great. Oh yeah, that's, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Yeah, you know, uh, years ago mm. now, in two, oh, it would have been 2011, 12, around that time, mm, mm. I used to support uh, the suit van at my school. I still support it, but I used to actually go to it. That's what I'm saying. I think, yeah, yeah, you yeah, did yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to do that. Uh, and I think I even took um, your wife, Bernadette, on one as well. I think so. Yeah, I think she you did. Yeah, she came, yeah, yeah with us. Yeah, cause, uh, yeah. Um, so what yeah. happened was we used to take students to, so we used to, we used to go to Footscray. Uh, now, Footscray, now our that's school right. Has, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, my school has a local suit van now, which serves the local area, which is good. Cool. Yep, uh, yep. But in the past, um, through uh, I was in a, um, a a group called Raymar, which was like a, a student faith and service development model, where students, mm, uh, mm. you know, they they join this group with you. It's almost like having your own youth group um, for mm. three years. So from year ten, yep. year eleven, year twelve, and they they take the journey all the way through. And one of the aspects is putting your faith into service. And so we used to take students to, we built up a relationship with the, with the um, St. Vincent of Hall Footscray suit van. And That's so, right, St. Vinny's. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah. So on a Friday night, we'd go up to, up to Footscray and, and help do the rounds there. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I got to drive the, you know, the, the minibus a couple of times. And, <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, but the thing is, there's a, there was a spot where, um, where uh, people knew um, that that they could go. It was like a, an oval in Footscray, like a footy oval. Exactly. So yeah. we park there, and, and yeah. then people, you know, at, at at the appointed time, people would know to come, come and, and get things they need. So you know, yeah. we gave out, you know, we'd be giving out milk, we'd be feeding people, mm. uh, you know, like you know, just having soup with them there and having a chat and things like that. Yeah. And at, at once, you know, at one point, I remember it was the middle of winter and it was cold, and we gave blankets. Um, yeah, and there was this one lady. Awesome. She was there on her own, but she had a daughter. And she was talking about how she needed blankets for her daughter. And she was like, she was in tears. Like, I feel really emotional talking about this because I couldn't Gosh. believe it. Um, and she gave me the biggest hug, you know, <laughs> what I mean? like, she, like thanking me. And I felt like, I felt like I did nothing. I just turned up, to be honest. The blankets mm, were already there and I handed to her, but, but it meant the world to her. It meant the world to her. And it was yeah. one of the, it was one of the best hugs I've ever received. I didn't do it for the hugs. <laughs> but, uh, but this, you know, but the amount of gratitude she had for this simple act you know, exactly, and, and this exactly. is you know this is the healing power of putting faith into action. I think exactly it, it can be it, it it can help people spiritually. Obviously, it helps people physically. Uh, mm, you know mm, it mm. it reminds people in the who are in the direst of circumstances that there is good in the world, and, oh, that, they, and that they can participate in that good as well. Uh, after I spoke to her, I literally and I still remember this. I walked around to the other side of the van and had a bit of a cry. <laughs> and, oh. Yeah, it, it, and two of the students, the students like, "Are you okay?" I said, "Go away, I'm fine, I'm fine." Yeah, like, okay. I'm all right. I'm not crying. You're crying. Go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
um, but it was amazing. And um, and I remember, yeah, there was one time where I went, but uh, but the students had to pull out because they had different, you know, a couple of different things happened. So some of the, the there were we had three students that were meant to come and they had to pull out. Mm-hmm. And I took your wife Bernadette, yes, and um, yeah, yeah. and uh, Priscilla, Ger- so Jared's wife as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And I remember afterwards just the conversation we were having about it. Um, it's it's a very eye opening experience. Um, and we're going to talk about new res- New Year's resolutions in a minute, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I would say to anyone, if you get an opportunity to volunteer anywhere that serves the poor, mm. uh, have a go. And, and not just to give people things, but to get into conversations with people who experience mm. homelessness. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, and to listen. Uh, yeah. Because, because your, your simple act, you're giving up three or four hours uh, here and there, can be such a healing moment for, you know, for people who, who need it, who, who need physical help and who need spiritual help. And you don't have to Bible bash anyone. It's like I said, that spiritual no, help no, is just, just listening. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just listening. Like you said, yeah. yeah. They just want to talk to you. They just want to talk. talk. They just want someone to listen to them. Yeah. Is uh, it? They just yeah. want, they just want to know that, um, that they can form a, a relationship with you, even if it's just mm. for that night. Uh, mm. and it, it's such a healing, um, uh, activity. And it's just, it's just something that, that is, that, shows our faith at its best exactly is when exactly. we're is it because i love god i'm going to love my neighbor exactly because mm-hmm. because god is so good because god loves me so much i just want that love to be visible to radiate from me into other people as well and if i can be god's instrument in doing that then count then sign me up count me yeah. in. and that's 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 what i think is so beautiful about it and yeah. and this is something also by the way uh, not just for people who experience homelessness do this in your home do it with your do it with your wife or your husband or your kids. You know, do it with your, you know, do it with your other family members. Do it with your friends. You can radiate God's love just by, you know, just by by doing. You just by exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I could rant on about this forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, that's cool. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the homeless we we'll we we'll say is that they want they want to say something and they want people to listen to them. Yeah. And a lot, my mom, a lot of the time, I look, I, I've done it. I must admit yep. I've done it. I, I've walked by them, you yep. know, and majority of the time they are asleep during the day. Yes, yeah. And yeah. underneath the blankets and everything. I don't know, you know, it's, it's rude for, you know, to poke them and say, hello, do you want to of talk? Course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't yeah. do that to anyone else, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like, but then you got them, you know, we, we and I see them just sitting there, even some of them are uh, busking. The bu- mm-hmm. I want to say buskers are homeless. But you notice that these people have had a hard in life, and you, yeah, you, you few you, a few dollars, and how much you want to give, sorry, yeah, and everything. Um, and but majority of the time, they just want someone to listen, uh, to do what they have, what they say. Yeah, relationship. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah that's all they want to say. Just want it, like a a kind ear, and yeah. Just just to just to blurt out, like I said, just to rant, yeah, or talk about anything, and it's like that's fine. It's just all they need. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's use that to uh, taper off into our our next part of uh, faith beyond borders. So, uh, I thought we talk about New Year's resolutions, and straight away when people when you say it, people are going, oh, <laughs> goodbye, switch off. Uh, oh. but, yeah, yeah, it's true though because sometimes New Year's yeah. resolutions can be hard. You know, like, you know, we yeah. sometimes we make too many yeah. and we can't do them all. Sometimes yeah. we just make one that's too hard. Uh, or, or make or, one; it's it's so expensive. <laughs> it's so expensive. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, trying to yeah. lose, you know, lose weight. Yeah. To, you know, buy this. Trying to lose weight. Yeah, yeah. But what if we stripped it down to the simplicity? Mm. Uh, mm. So, mm. if you want to mm. make a resolution about exercise and sleep, mm. and you know, not mm. using your phone, mm. go ahead, do that. That's important. Mm. Right. Mm. But what if we stripped it down to the spiritual simplicities? Uh, you know, as well, the important thing. And so um, I found this great one. So it says uh, the the editors at the Jesuits at the Jesuit Review mined the word the words of Pope Francis during 2021. So they reviewed things that Pope Francis said in 2021. Uh, and being our spiritual father, the Pope, we, we want to listen and see what he has to say in his wisdom as well. And they developed eight New Year's resolutions based on things that he that he said. So I'll share the link to this website. It's called Friar Musings. So I'll share that um, in our show notes. But I'll just whip through this really quickly. So the first one, surprise, surprise, volunteer for a local charity or nonprofit. <laughs> there it is. All right, go and yeah. meet people on the margins. Volunteer. Uh, we've mm-hmm. just spent, uh, I won't explain it because you and I have just spent a whole, you know, <laughs> almost half an hour talking about it. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah. That's a really yeah, good will. one. Yeah, um, volunteer. Why not? What were the charity or nonprofit place? Yeah. Yeah. Try that out. Yep. yep. Number two, stop judging others. 
So, Ooh. yeah, so Ooh. judging and gossiping Ooh. about those around yeah. us, um, Pope Francis yeah. said, is so mm. easy to do that we fall into mm. it without thinking. So mm. the Pope offered a challenge, an alternative. He said, instead, look at yourself. With this shift in perspective, he suggests we might discover something important. It is good to ask ourselves what drives us to correct a brother or sister, and if we are not in the same way co-responsible for their mistake. So instead of nitpicking our neighbors, let's be honest with ourselves and about our own shortcomings and make space for compassion instead of criticism. Beautiful. Yep. Nice and easy. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So Lena, I promise to stop judging you from now on. Okay. Oh, Lindsay, oh, I don't never judge you, man. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> I'm judging you right now. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But so, but so true. It's, it's very easy to criticize, you know. So, I mean, we can critique, which is important. You know, th- this it. isn't working correct. because blah, correct. blah, blah, blah. Let's make it better. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. criticism for its own sake, what does it solve? It, it doesn't solve anything. Nothing much. A- and no, you no. only need to, you know, go online and look at the negativity to see that, that criticism Ooh. is not working. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's horrible out there. And, With, and sorry, to be yeah. honest, to be honest, everyone who's listening, you mm. could be such a prophet just by being more positive online than negative. Think negative. about that too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Can't be. Yep. Take scripture to heart. So important, isn't it? To have a biblical mm. faith yep. Um, yep. As, yep. as much yep. as we possibly can. This is one I need to challenge myself because I do read scripture, but I need to, you know, make it less than random or more than random, you know, random mm. reading. Yeah. So, um, yep. so in uh, an audience on January 27th, uh, he said, uh, it, um, take the right approach to scripture. Be careful though that you don't annoy people. And he said, it irritates me a little when I hear Christians who recite verses from the Bible like parrots. Um, <laughs> so, of course, yeah, the Pope, he wasn't, he wasn't discouraging reading the Bible, but quite the no. opposite. Uh, yeah, what he was expressing yeah. was a frustration with the approach to scripture that focused simply on just rote memorizing. So basically just memorizing um, just one you know, or phrases, yeah, of phrases and then throwing yeah. them at people mm. rather than sort of focusing on that personal encounter that so th- there are ways we can approach talking to people we can you know someone could say i've got this problem and you could say well jesus says this this and this and uh, is yeah, that the most it, helpful thing yeah, you know exactly. un- unless a person yeah. says what does jesus say you know there exactly. might be not be but the thing is what if everything that jesus said informed the way that you spoke to someone spoke instead no so exactly. daniel Noor, all right washing people's feet you know that you know he he's exactly. taken the washing of the feet and applied it with his hands hands you know, like, and mm-hmm. and with his words uh, so, so there are ways into a conversation, but rather than just Bible bashing people, as we call it, uh, mm. which doesn't necessarily help, it actually drives yeah. people away as well. A little bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. So it says here, his words remind us that sacred scripture is alive, that it speaks to us on an individual basis. God speaks to us through scripture. We've got to remember this as well. It's mm. not a book of words. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these words were are divinely inspired so that the people who wrote them wrote about their understanding of God in their context, exactly. in the place that they exactly. were, to an audience of people who needed to hear the message of God in it because of what they were going through. Uh, exactly. and, mm. and so this is God speaking to us today. And when we discern scripture, we think, what, was God, what, was, uh, what were the authors saying that the people that they wrote to needed to hear about God and from God in that time? And what does it say mm. to us now? Mm. And, mm-hmm. and how does scripture disturb us now so that we can change? Because I, I, I think that scripture, we shouldn't look at it as a book of nice things. I think of it more as a book of things that should challenge us and shake us and make us uncomfortable. Mm, you know, yeah, again, that yep. scripture in a sense should be like a mirror where you look into mm. it and you think, am I living up to what God has asked me to live up to? Mm. And the answer exactly. is usually no, mm. but you know what I mean? But, like, <laughs> but, but what can I do? What little things can I do this year to try, you know, to, to change rather than change. doing the same thing over and over again and failing? Yeah. Yeah, what yeah, can I do yeah. just to be that little bit more successful and grow in my relationship with God through scripture? Um, exactly. And, yeah. And serve cool. his people. Uh, yeah. So um, as Pope Francis says here, the word of God infused with the Holy Spirit when it is received with an open heart does not leave things as they were before. Never. Beautiful. Mm. All right. There you go. Um, that, those are words of wisdom to, to throw in there. Yep. All right, Lino, take one concrete step to become more environmentally conscious, conscious wow. and start now. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, well, but buy a hybrid car? 
<laughs> yeah, it's, okay, we talked about the really expensive ones. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that might do a little bit. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, so sometimes um, people hear environment as well. They're going, oh, he's going on about the environment again. But, but why? It's, why should we yeah. be environmentally conscious? This it, is the thing, def- and and I think it's important to remember two things. First of all, yeah. uh, the Earth is God's creation, exactly, and exactly. and theologically, and you can throw you can uh, you can look this up in the um in the Catechism as well. I forgot the reference. Don't ask me. I'm bad with numbers, but we are co-creators with God. So mm-hmm. God continues the act of creation through us. Creation didn't stop with with what you read in Genesis. Creation Genesis. continues. And we are now acting in God's creation, God's earth to, to exactly. continue. We're stewards of God's earth. Stewardship mm-hmm. again is, is our mm-hmm. role. The exactly. catechism talks about our stewardship of the earth yep. To, yep. to keep it and till it. Yep. And, and why would we do that? In one sense, the earth is a sign of God's love for us. So yep. we want to look after it and make sure exactly. that, you know, that it, it remains beautiful. Exactly. And the other thing as well is if the earth, you know, if we pollute and destroy, we take away people's ability to live. Exactly. Uh, you know, think exactly. of where, where rivers have become so polluted that people can't survive, you know, mm, through fishing mm, those rivers. Mm. Or think of think of where, you know, big corporations have overfished, you know, parts of the oceans, mm, you know, yeah. um, and made it yeah. unsustainable. Exactly. You know, think of our coral reef in, you know, in oh, yeah, Great, Great Barrier, Barrier Reef, reef yeah. which goes through bleaching Goodness every year me. because of climate that's, change, you know, it's things like that. horrible when you look uh, at it. Yeah. yeah, things, you know, all those things. Um, think of mm. the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a part of the, the Pacific Ocean, which is just full of p- microplastics, like, oh. you know, like tons and tons, millions of tons of microplastics, which, have, which come from <laughs> people throwing things out, throwing and, things you out. Know, and rubbish going through waterways and ending up in the oceans, uh, you know, and that again, uh, harms, you know, harms marine life and biodiversity is such an important thing. And if we affect one part of the chain of biodiversity, it can have a flow and effect, you know, to, to everything else and to us. Exactly. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, pollution, carbon pollution, all these things that we should, uh, you know, that, um, that we can do things about. So yes, become, Definitely. but by becoming more environmentally conscious, conscious, we are honoring the beauty of God's creation. Mm-hmm. And we are also looking after our brothers and sisters as well around the world so there's things to think about there um Mm. pray every day even when it's hard wow yeah okay what do you think about that one lino pray every day yeah pray every day that's something i have to really have to get back into (laughs) (laughs) yeah get back into but i should be doing it every day you know um get not a habit but get in that time and effort no no this is (laughs) yeah trying to get that time and to do the pray yeah. You know, and it would pre- definitely with your family and friends. And yeah, I think we definitely need to do it at while this, whatever this COVID thing, you know, everything's happening. Just, yeah, just to bring that faith back in again. Yeah. Just need to find some prayer. It, it doesn't have to be, I know people do the rosary. That is absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's, if it just needs to be just to say a prayer from your heart and soul to each other, why not? Yeah. 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 Lovely. He says, yeah. "Praying is uh, not something is not something easy, mm. and that's why we flee mm. from it." Pope Francis says, "Yeah, yeah. every yeah. time we mm. want to pray, we are immediately reminded of many other activities which, at the moment, <laughs> yeah. seem more important and more urgent." <laughs> yeah. And he says, "This happens to me too." <laughs> uh, yeah. It yes, does, uh, does. but he said, uh, "True progress in uh, spiritual life does not come from." Uh, you know, having multiple ecstasies, you know, but being mm. able to persevere in difficult times, walk, walk, walk on. And if you are tired, stop a bit and then start walking again. Mm. If you are feeling mm. discouraged about your pre- uh, progress in prayer, know that Pope Francis is struggling right there with you and don't give up. Mm. Uh, prayer is our communication with God. It's our, it's our primary relationship with God. Exactly. And, and the, other, mm. the, the importance of prayer is that prayer inspires action. We talked about putting our faith into action. Mm. Prayer helps us discern the actions that God wants us to, you know, to do in, in the world as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Uh, number six, let go of a grudge or two. Woo. Grudge. There you go. Yep. Oh, I, don't, wow. I don't think I have any. I, I'm one of those people I, I, that hasn't really had grudges any, against anyone. I, no, not a grudge. Yeah. Look, I, I think I wouldn't say uh, connection with grudge with forgiveness. And- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and you know, you we get the good old um, what was it saying? You know, forgive and forget. You know, you definitely forgive and then mm. forget. That's the harder part. Oh, forgetting is the hard forget- part for sure. Yeah, yeah, forgetting. But yeah. then well, I think once you got the forgiveness uh, um sorted out and then forgetting, 
yeah. sorted out. And I think we oh, could, be, could be a topic we could talk about, Liz, but, but forgive and forgetting. Yeah. You know, I think we've talked about it before, but um, we have yeah. talked about forgiveness in different yeah, contexts. Yeah. Context, yeah. yeah. Actually, this time last year, we did a big episode on forgiveness. So, exactly. yeah. I think it was. Like, January, it? January's episode January's, last year. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. So, he's basically advising that we don't end the day angry. Uh, oh, well, definitely not. No. Yeah, if you've uh, found yourself sniping at your spouse or being short with your close mm. friends, um, he said, listen to me well. Never finish the day without making peace. Mm. We fought. Mm. My God, I said bad words. I said awful things. But now to finish the day, I must make peace. And it says here, you know why? Because the Cold War, the Cold War the next day is very dangerous. <laughs> wow, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So well, the well, idea well. of, you know, waking up and just being bitter with each other because you had a, a bad, you know, yeah. an argument or whatever. It um, is hard it is yeah. with your partner, different with your partner. You know, I've heard uh, yeah. a phrase, never go to, no, never go to bed angry. Yeah, I'm sure St. Paul said something about never finishing the day, never day. letting the sun go down, um, yeah. you know, being angry with someone. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. So whether it's a caress on your husband or wife's cheek, as the Pope mm-hmm. suggested, or a conciliatory mm-hmm. text to a friend, mm. do not let the, uh, today's grudges fester till the morning. That's exactly. Good one. Yeah. I love this one. Get off Twitter. <laughs> Get oh, off I'm Twitter. Lucky. I'm lucky seven. I don't have it. I'm that's sorry, Liz. No, that's good. No, good. Yeah, <laughs> I good. Never, um, never so after the <laughs> pandemic moved much of our lives online, YouTube masses, mm. Zoom happy hours, untold hours of COVID doom scrolling on Twitter, <laughs> you might be ready for a social media cleanse in 2022. Mm. Pope Francis has repeatedly urged people to get off their smartphones and to start communicating in person. This year, in a message to journalists, he warned of the tyranny of always being online. Listening always goes hand in hand with seeing, with being present. Certain nuances, sensations, and well-rounded descriptions can only be conveyed to readers, listeners, spectators if the journalist has listened and seen for him or herself. This means escaping, and I know how difficult this is in your work, escaping from the tyranny of always being online, on social networks, on the web. So even if you're not a journalist, you can take a page from our very offline Pope and make 2022 a year filled with IRL conversation and friendship. Mm. IRL. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk to your brother Paul about what IRL stands for. Ah, uh, this should be. All right. Okay. <laughs> Dom, I know you're listening. Yes. I know you're going to edit this and you're, yes. you're, the, you're the secrets you're, of technology host. Yes. I'm throwing it over to you and next, <laughs> week, next time we'll tell everyone what it is. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, 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 you know, I, I feel ignorant that I don't know what that is. I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll have, yeah. I've never gone into that sort of side of all it. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that's all right because no one's going to judge us. So yeah. really, <laughs> yeah. um, that's true. That's true. Uh, and number eight, wow. call your loved ones regularly and truly yeah. listen to them. Mm. When was the last time we visited or telephoned an elderly person in order to mm. show our closeness and to benefit mm. from what they have to tell us? Mm-hmm. That was his question in his homily for the World Day for Grandparents and Elderly last year on July 26th. Few groups have been more profoundly affected by the pandemic than our elders. Now that vaccines and boosters have made it possible to safely visit them, what if you took this year to listen or to even record their stories and wisdom? Uh, So he said, let us not lose the memory preserved by the elderly, for we are children of that history, and without roots, we were wither. They protected us as we grew, and now it's up to us to protect their lives, to alleviate their difficulties, to attend to their needs and to assure that they are helped in daily life and not feel alone. Mm. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So yep. there we have it. Eight New Year's resolutions. They're simple. They're spiritual. Mm-hmm. They are love God and love your neighbor and put yes. your faith in, you know, they are Daniel Noor, what we just, you know, young exactly. Australian of the year in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Any thoughts before we move on? Oh, I just, just recapping on the, um, the Twitter thing. Cause, yep. <laughs> okay. I was on Facebook, uh, looking at Facebook, and um, I saw like a caption with um, a different generations, and there's one generation, just probably us, Linz, back in yep. the 80s and 90s, they are just playing in a swimming pool, not a swimming pool, near a river, yep. getting dirty, getting, you know, having fun in the other caption, all these kids just looking at their phones. <laughs> and says, yeah, thank yeah. God I was born in in, in this yeah. generation. Well, yes, whichever yeah. generation the person was born nice in, probably in the yeah. 1990s. And it's true. Yeah. Look, I, mm. I've done it. Yeah, you know, I've done. I, I'm, you know, I. It's look. I'm not saying, you know, secrets of technology will, will sort of agree that technology has approved. 
Yeah, it yeah. has let us do things that we haven't been doing for yet. Yeah, look, but I think what Pope Francis is trying to say is just put it down. Yeah, have some time for yourself, and like like we'll we'll talk about being listening. You know, have mm. a chat with someone and listen to them. Yeah, you know, they just they just want to have a chat and be be with you. So yeah, maybe it's just a time to put it down for a little bit. If it's end- <laughs> you, being 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 a mobile, you can have these notifications, thousands of them. Yeah, and everything coming across, you just maybe you just need to um ignore them. If it's your mum or dad or your family member, uh yeah, just have a look. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't, look at those. Don't, yeah, they're okay. Don't, don't yeah. think, don't think yeah. oh, I'll ignore that. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, yeah. what was happening? Okay, just you know, sometimes you just need to put it down and, and chill out. Absolutely. And um, with the call your loved ones, mm-hmm. yeah, that has been. So um, important during this pandemic. Yeah. Um, it's good just to keep in touch, you know, with our mums and dads and grandparents and our aunties and uncles, everyone, everyone. Yeah. If there's someone elderly you know, it's great to just have a, you know, one on one. Reach out. Uh, reach yeah. out. Oh, reach yeah. out. You've got, you got right. that song in my head now. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reach yeah. out and touch somebody. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, so, yeah, it's just, yeah, I think. During the pandemic, pandemic, it was very important for us to have that con- contact because a lot of people are either lonely, mm. um, don't have a lot of family here in in, in different countries. So, especially you know, it, or sorry, especially, but in Australia or wherever wherever you live, they just want that contact. Yes, and yeah, absolutely, it, yeah, it definitely, definitely, definitely do that, guys. And remember what Pope Francis said about the wisdom we can gain from listening to our elders as well. Exactly, definite yeah. wisdom. Yeah. Even though we yeah, we say that back in my days, we can do that. <laughs> look, look, it's it's understandable. You know, yes. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. we'll be doing it, Liz. You know, yeah. we'll be doing oh, for it. Sure. Well, yeah, know, we're, we're, I'm only doing it with my with my sons. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so we, we didn't have kids. phones when I was yeah. You know, yeah, we doing, back yeah. in our days, so we were yeah. able to climb a tree without yeah. falling off. Mm, but the internet which, was steam powered when I was young. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was just like one cable thing. Well, we used one cable, but you know what I mean. It's obviously. Past. It took but, um, took five yeah. years for Google to load when, when I was young. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. All but right. Yeah, uh, they just want to yeah, they just, they just want to hear and someone to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. And for those who are listening, what are your New Year's resolutions? Spiritual, mm. not spiritual? Let us know because uh, I need a couple more as well. So <laughs> give, give me some advice. All right. Well, let's move on, and uh, we're now going to talk about some science. Ah, what a fine day for science! You have any hobbies? I collect spores, molds, and fungus. Can you reverse the polarity? I'll do my best. Science, 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 science. Yeah, I like science. All right, Lino. Here we oh, go. Oh wow! Okay. I'm always, I'm always worried oh. when it comes to talking know, about science without Caroline. Time. I know Caroline, yeah. you know, encourages yeah. us. And she says oh, that's great yeah. things, but I know, I know, in her mind, she'll go, "Boys, what have you done to the science? Yeah, what have we done to it? Oh, yeah. What have you done? Yes. I know so, we love I, you, Caroline, and you love us. I, I wonder, we yeah. love you, man. So yeah. yeah, I'm going to stick with something that we're comfortable with, and that's space news. And cool. uh, yep. yep, yes, you just and yep. Some, yep. actually an event that I was really, really excited about um, that happens. Uh, well, started on uh, on Christmas night here in Australia, so it was mm. uh, it was late, mm-hmm. just before midnight here in Australia, um, Christmas night, and uh, and I. I thought it was great. And it was the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. And but, but, hold on, hold on. I, I must yeah. admit, it does look like a very big um, honeycomb. It does, yeah. Like the mirror, yeah, it's a massive it's mirror. It's so cool. Yeah, it looks, six, yeah. Uh, is it 6.5 meters mirror, the Ooh, mirror is, which wow. is six times, uh, that was my first talking point there, <laughs> six times the size of the mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope. Wow. So it, this this wow. thing is a, is a beast. Um, it is, the, the solar sail um, or the solar um, covering there uh, is the size of a tennis court, this Whoa. is the sun shield, um, Goodness me. Yeah, which keeps all the equipment really cool. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a really serious uh, mm. telescope, and one that I think this is my big call for the year that we should pay a lot of attention to, because yeah. this is going to open up discoveries uh, and new scientific knowledge that humanity has not encountered before. It's going to deepen our understanding of the um, literally deepen the, our understanding the of, of, of the universe. universe. Yeah. yeah. Um. And wow. so yeah, and so I just wanted to share some really interesting things and then leave some resources that people can do some further research of their own on. Um, so a couple of things. So first of all, I've talked about um, the size of the mirror. So the, the mirror um, is this uh, sort of gold-coated mirror um, made of sort of hexagonal shapes. 
uh, all put together and it, it makes uh, a 6.5 meter sized mirror um, to enhance the um, the the imagery that they can collect. Uh, mm, and mm. each of those mirrors have little uh, motors behind them so that can be adjusted. So, adjusted. so it's yeah, not one giant saying. mirror um, yeah. that, with one movement. It, it's when when all, it's all put together, it is one yeah. giant mirror, but each of those sections of it can be adjusted slightly adjusted. as well where needed. Um, so uh, the what this mirror, what the um, the James Webb Telescope can do is detect light from galaxies which have formed 13.5 billion years ago. So, oh my goodness me! And and here's the uh, here's Whoa. the kicker. This is only 300 million years after the Big Bang. So that's a long time. <laughs> but in the in the in the age of the uh, of the universe, yeah, that's nothing. Like that's that's really yeah, young. Well, true. No, it's not nothing. That it's very true. young. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the if the if the universe is 13 and a half billion years old. And we're being we're going to be able to see the light from galaxies that are only three hundred million uh, three hundred million years we're, after we're, the Big Bang. Big bang. That's bang. that's massive. Like that's that's mm. you know like this is very very early. People have talked about it, this being able to look into the past. You know the young the young universe. Wow. So there are lots of discoveries there. So some of the questions that wants to address is how did early galaxies form? So to be able to look at the 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 formation Ooh. of galaxies from um from a long time ago. Are there um, chemical building blocks in the atmospheres of other planets? So to be able to, hmm. to detect those as well. Yep. And is our solar system unique or are there, are there solar systems like ours? So these are really important questions to answer. Mm. Yeah, um, so uh, as we know, and uh, so Lino, we were, you, uh, you and, um, and myself and uh, Jared's families, remember we went to, we went to a, a little place called Lurg um, oh my goodness over, the, yeah. over the holidays, um, pre, pre getting COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so was, we hired a, wow. a holiday, a holiday house there for, yeah, yeah. for almost no, a week. Nice place. Yeah, and awesome do you remember place. that night yeah. we went stargazing? Oh so my was, goodness yeah. me. And there's no light pollution no, because there's no, there's no street lights, no, no nothing. Street lights it's, and it's pitch black outside because we were, we were in the middle of a rural property, yep. and um, you know, there's no street lights or anything. Street it was just anything, farmland like... everywhere as far as the eye could see where we were. Exactly. And when we all looked into the we're night dead. sky, oh my goodness, uh, the, me. it was so populated with stars, stars. and you know, and galaxies, and it, it was yeah. amazing to look at. It was just so stunningly beautiful. Like oh, it was, uh, it was, and you could just notice the detail of, of the night sky so much more than if you do so it from your, you know from your backyard. Exactly. It uh, was. So, uh, and we were talking about we had a conversation that the light that we were looking at is from the past. It's it uh, exactly. it's where those stars and galaxies and everything were, um, were yep. possibly millions of years ago, depending on how long it takes for the light of that star to reach, so reach us. us. Yeah, exactly. like traveling yeah. at light speed and all that. So mm, the James mm. Webb Telescope is going to be looking at galaxies that this light can look into the past, as it's as described. It's going to look at the lights from galaxies as they were, um, you know, milli- uh, billions of years ago. Now, Caroline can explain this better, but this is based on the idea of redshift, and I'm not going to explain it because it confuses <laughs> me. I'll leave it to Caroline. So, Caroline, yes. make a mental note to explain oh, redshift well. to our. But the, <laughs> but the idea of seeing lights from an uh, from an object, yes, um, you know, yeah. for, you know, from those millions or billions of years ago, mm. uh, because of the how long it takes for that light to reach, uh, you know, our our eyes, the Earth, the telescope, whatever. Exactly. So, yeah. so those are the fundamental questions going to explore. I love this one about is our solar system unique because I watched this great documentary on on other solar systems and exoplanets mm. and things like that. Mm. Um, and our one is unique in the sense that apparently our Jupiter is in the wrong place compared to where the Jupiter's the Jupiter-like planets of others um, solar Whoa. systems are. So generally, oh, wow. and and you can Google this, everyone. The, this is a true a true thing. Whoa. Um, the Jupiter-like planets in other solar systems are actually uh, the the first planet after the star, you know, the sun of that solar system. Oh, and they call me. them hot Jupiters because they orbit closely and they spin but very fast. Spin fast, So yeah. they call them hot yeah. Jupiters because they're closer. So yeah. our Jupiter is in the wrong place <laughs> or is in, you know, is not in the same place uh, that, that that's found commonly in other, um, other solar, uh, systems. solar systems. Yeah. And I know I'm explaining that very, in a very basic way, cause there's a lot more science behind that. But yeah. It, it yeah, makes but- us unique. And Jupiter actually in our solar system protects us from a lot of the, the space junk and the rocks and everything. Uh, yeah, that that could wow. potentially collide with it. Collide with it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like about a bit to say. Of, yeah, someone described it as like a, a vacuum cleaner for our, our solar system <laughs> in, in one sense. Yeah, so, um, wow. Yeah, so uh, that's a really important Jeez. question. So are there 
are there solar systems that are similar to ours somewhere somewhere out there in the in our galaxy and beyond mm-hmm. our galaxy as well? Mm-hmm. Um, now, the James Webb Telescope was too big to fit into the standard fairing of any rocket. So it, 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 it because of the size of a tennis court when it's completely unfolded, <laughs> yeah. it, there's no way yeah. you could store it in a store in it, a rocket. Yeah. Um, you know, the fairing of those two covers at the top of a rocket where you put your payload and then open and deploy and whatever else. I, exactly. So wow, it's not going to yeah. fit uh, anywhere. So they basically designed it to fold up like an origami, you know, inside yeah. by origami. Yeah. So yeah. The, now oh, so I've got to cool. say, um, thousands of engineers from the United States, Canada, yeah, Europe worked on this and on the different on components and everything. Mm-hmm. And the unfolding uh, um, and opening up after it was launched was a was an engineering marvel because lots of little bits and pieces had to move around, and you know, and lots of components had to open and unfold and, and assemble. And as each each time this happened, it would take hours. Yeah, you definitely. Now, like, yeah. If you were here on Earth, you could use your hands and just fold something open, done, right? But because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's hurtling away from, from the Earth and yeah. we're not going to be able to send anyone to repair it if something goes wrong, oh, exactly. they had to go through this pro- process of getting it ready so meticulously. And in fact, the James Webb Telescope, the design started in 1996. Whoa, so, uh, what's yeah. that? So we're at, was it 25, 25 years? 25. Wow. Is that right? Someone else can maths me on that. That's why we need Jared. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He's the maths guy in this group. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, 20, about 25 that? years. Yeah. To 25 go from years. design to build design to, to, build. Yeah, to testing and, and launch. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, um, wow. so it was designed to fold up um, yep. and fit into the fairing of the European Space Agency's Ariane 5 rocket, mm. which is like a heavy duty lifting rocket. Yeah. yeah. An amazing rocket to watch, watch oh, its launch. Cool. This thing yeah. is massive. It's powerful, and it just shoots off the ground. It's like like it's got no time to be on the ground. It wants to get to space. It's, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, yeah, and so the launch um, apparently was so successful as well mm. that uh, it was placed perfectly uh, um, into Earth's you know into Earth's orbit to leave the to leave the Earth orbit and head out into um, further into our solar system. Mm. It was so perfectly placed. That the engines weren't really needed for massive corrections. Oh, cool! That, um, that the telescope will now go way beyond the ten years that um, ten years. That, that was expected at its oh, lifespan. Wow. Uh, so it will be able to stay in its in in its orbit, and I'll talk about the orbit later on. Um, well beyond what was expected, so they'll be able to collect lots of science for a lot longer, which is awesome. Cool. Uh, cool. And, and ten years, really, you know, when you think about it, is not a long time in research. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you know, the, and the universe is so big. You know what it, oh, you can't, it's yeah. massive. It would take yeah, yeah, a lot more longer than that. Yep. So uh, oh, yeah, go on. Yep. I was about to say, Liz, that yep. can you imagine that you've been working twenty five years on this project. Mm. Well, that is, if you've been in that job for twenty five years. Yeah, and I, I'll. I would be so teary. Yeah, I would too. I'd be celebrating like crazy. Celebrating, yeah. seeing this thing fly up in the air, <coughs> able to f- um, f- find out um, a lot of information about the universe. Yeah. And it's able to, you, you can imagine that you, you've done all the drawings, all the technical mm. things, and, and making sure this thing unfolds properly. Millions of hours fu- of design and preparation. Design, yeah, trying building. to make sure you're yeah. building, and then you find out that you go up there. And it's perfect. He doesn't have to. What do you yep. call it? The rocket's uh, lens. He, yes. uh, he did, didn't have to adjust. No, it's perfectly to placed. Perfect where place. it needs to be. Yeah. And boom, and it's gone. Yep. And it's like, it's like saying goodbye. To, well, not goodbye, but saying good luck to a. Uh, well, I'm, it's like one of your children in a sense. It's exactly. That's, yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you if you were there from the start to the end Tell of that process, end, it's like process. sending your child, a child away, a child away, yeah, and, out into the into the world, into, well, <laughs> into the oh, universe, well, into the universe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. out of space, yeah. out of space, and, absolutely. And that, it'll be oh, that's awesome. That's I'll oh, see how how the uh, James Webb. I'm 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 assuming that's the guy who actually really. It designed uh, the thing. Now no? I sh- probably oh. should have done some research beforehand, but James Webb was a, a space scientist, mm-hmm. and I'll get Caroline mm-hmm. to fill in the gaps in the next <laughs> okay, episode. Sorry, sorry, too. Yeah. sorry, sorry. No, I, I didn't did, do I my thought, research. I, thought... I probably should have done my research on the naming, but I'd I'd planned to talk more about the satellite than the its history. But cool, we'll cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. yeah the telescope. But we'll we'll fill that in a future episode. Uh, yep. Yeah. So it, it took uh it took three weeks for it to unfold. Mm. And open up completely, definitely, definitely. Uh, and that was all done remotely. So they had to wow. unfold, you know, send all the signals for it to do this, to do that, and yeah. to make sure it works. So I'll just go through the process of the opening up very, very quickly. Um, so we were fortunate enough to see this one in the in the li- in the live launch, which was cool. 
31 oh, minutes after it was launched, um, the solar array deployed. They like mm-hmm. opened up. So you could mm-hmm. actually see it. The, the satellite, the, um, not satellite, the telescope moved telescope. away uh, and you could see the footage and it's beautiful footage. And then, uh, <laughs> and then in that same moment, as it was moving away from, from, um, from being deployed, mm-hmm. the solar array opened up, which was really good to see. Cool. Uh, two hours later, the high gain antenna deployed. And then on the third day, the sun shield pallet uh, extended. So the sun shield pallet is like the surface that the sun that is used to stretch, to stretch and, and, and tension the sun shield. Yeah. So that, that opened, it's like a frame for it. So cool. that opened up. Cool. Um, after four days, the tower assembly uh, deployed. And so this is the uh, this is the the middle section where the mirror is folded up. So it extended basically. It, it moved up. So that had to happen. So that eventually the mirror could completely open up. Completely open up. Yeah. Fold. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, after five days, the um, the a momentum flap. So um, there's like a flap on one of the far ends of the um, of the telescope deployed successfully, and then the sun shield membrane opened up as well. So this was like the cover to so the sun shield could deploy. Mm. Uh, on day six, the sun shield um, opened, which was a very long process. And this would have been the most nerve wracking part, I reckon. So Ooh. it's it, it's the size of a tennis court. It looks like a, almost like a giant, not triangle. What do you call it? The other, that other shape. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> like it looks like a giant kite anyway. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah, had yeah. to tension, which means it was stretched out and it's got several layers. So it had to open up oh, as wow. well. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Mm, so then mm. on day 10, the, um, the mirror support structure deployed. So this is, uh, this is a structure that, um, that uh, opens up and supports the, the, the mirrors. Mm. And then on days 12 and 13, the, the two sides of the mirror um, opened up and, stra- and, and uh, connected into this giant six and a half meter uh, you wow. know, mirror array that, that it has. Um, yeah. And then on the 24th of, um, of January, which is uh, one month after launch, the uh, telescope successfully arrived at the Lorange Point 2, which is uh, one million mile, uh, kilometers, I should say, away from earth so it's a million kilometers away Ooh, from us geez. and um and basically it's going to orbit the earth and the sun at a million at that one million miles making mm. uh making its orbit and then using its engine for course corrections from here and there but again because the um because the engine didn't have to use a lot of um, power and fuel to make any course corrections from the launch because the launch was so perfect mm. that engine has a longer lifespan which means more data Good. can be collected yeah, more more data yep. can be collected yeah yep, yep. which is great so, um, so that's all I'll say about the James Webb Telescope for now, um, except to say that we're obviously going to be following its progress now. Uh, at the moment, it's in its it's in its orbit. The equipment um, and cameras, it's got these big infrared cameras. It's got a whole lot of them, which can uh, take photos or can observe multiple objects at once. So hundreds of objects Gosh. at the same time, which is awesome as well. So that's it's one not, expensive camera, it man. Look, yeah, oh, these cameras, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this project, this project, I think, went into the billions. Or yeah, it was. Oh, this was an expensive, over budget project. You definitely really, buy really that awesome t- camera well. from um, Ted's cameras. Yeah, like, it's more on. than Ted's cameras. Yeah, <laughs> this is more than the lens that you bought for burning the other day. Don't worry. Yeah, um, but this, uh, yeah, basically, it's got a, a group wow. of, um, of mm. different kinds of infrared sensors and the um, and and cameras. And the important thing about this is that they can see through nebulas oh, and through me. dust clouds. And beyond into our into the galaxy beyond to to be able to capture light from um from you know from uh you know stars and galaxies and other objects that are out there Definitely, that um yeah. that we cannot see with the Hubble Space Telescope scope or anything else at the moment. Yeah, so this is wow. one incredibly sensitive telescope, and yep. what uh, uh, like I said, I can't wait to see what what it brings back and what discoveries mm-hmm. we find there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's the James Webb Space Telescope, and uh, I just wanted to bring up another couple of very quick space stories. So the first one is, um, I hope no one's going to be planning on being on the dark side of the moon anytime in March, <laughs> because uh, because uh, as this headline says, I think this is a bit clickbaity to be honest, but it says out of control <laughs> SpaceX rocket on collision course with the moon. Now that gives you the image that there's some rocket flying out there under power, you know, with, with, you know, with its engines lit and it's going to collide with the moon because something went wrong. Now what actually happened was um, a Falcon 9 booster. So the booster is the first stage, which pushes the payload um, and the second stage into space out of the earth's gravity. Well, and then what happens is the first stage separates from the second stage uh, in SpaceX's case, it usually comes back to Earth and lands. That's what they do mm. now. Or mm. in, uh, in a lot of other space um, agencies or, or companies, 
um, the the first stage will um, will separate and then um, it will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what happens uh, in, in other companies. So SpaceX now recovers its um, its first stages. They come back to Earth and land, which is always really cool to watch. Yeah. But this, um, <laughs> this one was in uh, deployed in 2015, and I think this was uh, so this was. Uh, uh, one of two possibilities, because I didn't actually do my research on this. Either this was before SpaceX was uh, were returning their rockets and recovering them, their, their boosters, or sometimes the payload is really heavy, like the weight, yeah. there's more weight. So they have to um, keep the booster keep running for longer, longer. To, to the point where it can't be recovered. So it's, yeah, exactly. it's basically shot out of Earth's orbit as well. Uh, and, yeah. and that does happen, you know, that does happen sometimes where... Uh, the payload, um, it's because of the, the size and weight of the payload, it's not possible to recover the booster. So mm-hmm. SpaceX mm-hmm. hasn't done that in a long time, but that that was sort of the go um, uh, with that. So it launched in 2015 as part of an interplanetary mission to send space a space weather satellite on a million mile journey. So again, this was another satellite that went to the Lagrange point as well. Cool. So obviously it wasn't just a low Earth orbit situation. Mm-hmm. So the booster did have to do more work to get it out of the Earth's gravity. Um, so, but, uh, after the time of completing the long burn of its engines and sending the NOAA's deep space climate observatory on its way, um, which, uh, it, the rocket's second stage became derelict. So they discard it, just send it out into the, into the mm. solar system. Mm, mm, um, so yeah. I'll, I'll cut the story short and if people want to read the article, they can basically because of gravity and the solar system and the way things work out. Sometimes our space junk comes back. <laughs> it happens. All right, it does happen. Um, we've had we've had old probes that have been gone for decades. That you know that oh my will, goodness me, you know, yeah, not come back to this close. Not, but, you know, come yeah, back. yeah, yeah. So, yes, definitely, uh, definitely. So what's happening now is uh, that the observers have mapped out um, that this is it's on a it's a, it's been on a chaotic orbit, so it hasn't Ooh. been like in a stable orbit. From wherever it was, and mm-hmm. there's about four tons of space junk from this from this <laughs> first tons? stage. Yep. that's a lot of that's yeah. a lot of time. And it's going to it's going to collide with the moon at a velocity of two point five eight kilometers per second, sometime in early March. Some some yep. are saying on the fourth of March. And uh, in this article from the Guardian, there's a link to the blog blog post which goes into some really deep science about why this wow. person says March the fourth. Sadly, Ooh. sadly, sadly, if you wanted mm. to observe it, it looks like it's going to hit the dark side of the moon. So, oh yeah, but, we won't yeah, be able to see so it. We're, definitely. Yeah. So we're mm. just going to know it happens, but we're not going to see it. Maybe someone will catch it on its on its way to the moon, but we yeah, actually see the collision. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a bit of an anticlimax. I think it's just going to be like a yeah, thunk, yeah. and that's it. You know? it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but but pretty, you know, like pretty interesting thing anyway. Um, and he said, and uh, mm. the, one of the scientists, um, an observer. Uh, he said uh, that the event will allow for observation of subsurface material ejected by the rocket strike. Um, and he's saying that he hopes it hits the moon, but he said, mm-hmm. we already know what happens when junk hits the earth. There's not much to learn from that. <laughs> it's okay. Just, it's, more okay. than anything, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and lastly, for our science topic, I just wanted to mention that this is a big year. Every year is a big year in spaceflight. But this is a really big year because there's going to be a couple of firsts. So the first, uh, the first thing is um, that one of the big, the the big, awesome first is that um, SpaceX's Starship is slated to launch at some time this year, and uh, this will be a, its first test flight to orbit. So oh. uh, if anyone's been watching any of NASA space flights live mm-hmm. videos and their mm-hmm. updates, uh, and also um, there's a there's a channel called Marcus House. And he's, a, he's an Aussie, Tasmanian, uh, and he also does an update on space news, uh, like a 20-minute update every weekend. So you can see like what's been happening. And a lot of it is SpaceX because SpaceX is doing all the big stuff right now. It looks like it. Yeah. yeah. It? yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And he takes everything and just condenses it into a 20-minute report. It's, it's good. It's like really high quality. So, uh, um, cool. so Marcus House, if anyone wants to see that. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, so Starship uh, will launch on a test. They've, been, they've had the booster... Um, they've been testing the the booster's engines. Um, the booster is a massive thing. It's um, I think it's twice as powerful as the Saturn V, which, if anyone knows, is the rocket that launched um, you know, astronauts into space uh, into yeah. the moon. So wow. this this is a massive, massive you know rocket. Um, Gosh. And so and so um, it's going to send um, a Starship in. And then the plan is that um, you know to keep it in orbit, and um, both the first stage and and the Starship second stage 
will come back to Earth, but they'll they'll land in the sea. So basically, they just land on water, and okay. and that's it. So that's so it's, this is a, t- a test, um, and we'll actually see how far it actually goes. It will, will it burn up in the atmosphere, or you know, they're, they're you know they're they're not worried if it fails because SpaceX has a different approach where <laughs> failures and things going boom is part of the, the way yeah, they operate. So, part of the so yeah, subject, so yeah. it's kind of fun mm. in a way watching things explode when they're testing. So <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, it's all part of it, and they they basically fail towards success if that makes sense. Yeah, they mm. learn from every failure, they collect the data, they redo things, make it better uh, until Definitely, it all yeah. works out. Yeah. Mm. Um. So that's the first one. Uh. The second one is that NASA's Artemis mission, and this is the mission to return people to the moon. Uh. So cool. they they um, wow. plans for it. Yeah. So the first Artemis rocket is going to launch this year, and I think February or March is when it's slated for. So it could actually be really soon. Mm, uh, so this um the the launch of the Artemis rocket it's going to be an, an um it's going to be an unmanned launch so there'll be no astronauts on this one but it will have the full configuration of um of two boosters you know the uh the the big fuel section in the middle there um as well as um the uh the capsule where the apps the astronauts uh, I think it's called a Centaur and I could be wrong about that um but the the capsule where the astronauts you know would would be sent to the moon the whole lot it's the, all the equipment's going to be there. The idea is to launch this and get it to the moon and 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 back again. So the test flight, and yeah, if that all yeah. goes well, Artemis two. I don't know when that's going to be, but Artemis two will be the mission to send people send to the moon. actual physically. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, wow. And and Starship is a, is actually a key component of that because um Starship is also going to become a moon lander. Um, mm. part of the Artemis mission is to actually build a space station in orbit of the moon to use for um for landing and recovery if people have landed on the moon. So. Goodness this, me! This, this mission, wow, the Artemis mission project is is amazing, and so um, if uh, if all goes well with this launch, and let's hope NASA's launch does go well because it's expensive mm. and over budget in a big way. <laughs> uh, so let let's hope it does go well, um, <laughs> and, and there'll be some amazing insights that come from that too. Uh, and yeah. lastly, this is not a first, but we haven't seen a super heavy launch in a long time from SpaceX. So this is this is um, basically three Falcon Nine. Boosters um, me. strapped together to, to launch a massive payload, and that those Whoa. launches are are just something to behold because not only is it the launch, but it's the recovery of the three boosters. All three boosters come back to Earth. Oh two my of, goodness! Two of them me. land next to each other, and one <laughs> will land in the ocean. And it's always an event when they have a, um, a Falcon Heavy. So there were no launches this last year for a Falcon Heavy, but mm. I think there are three or four slated for this year. So it's always an event, and I can't wait. And um, wow, and, yeah. And to my colleague from work who is listening, I'm going to complain again about rocket leave. It should be a thing, and I want I want leave so I can watch these launches. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right. So, uh, yeah. So that's our science for the week. Rocket League. Yeah. All right. Um. So, Lino. Normally, we talk about entertainment, but we are way over time. So I think <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Except to say that yeah. the Book of Boba Fett is an awesome series, and episode five <laughs> is amazing. And we will say more about that in the future. Yeah, um, we will, and in fact, we will. if we say it in the next episode, we can spoil quite a bit. So, so cool, we'll do that. Cool, 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 um, so let's wrap it up there. So before we go, as always, uh, we want to thank the patrons who support our um, our show and uh, and who support the network. So today we would love to thank Lauren B, Eileen E, William Y, Pauline H, and Michael K. Through their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give, they make it possible for the Catholics of Oz and all of the great shows at StarQuest to continue. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And we'd love to know what you thought of our topics today. So today we really, it was Faith Beyond Borders and Science. And, uh, yeah, and But good. really, uh, New Year's yeah. resolutions, tell us about mm. it. Have you yeah. helped... Have you helped um, people by doing a soup van or a soup kitchen or, a, you know, or a, another project? We want to tell people about it. We want to hear it and share it as well because uh, when we share, other people get ideas wherever they are in the world to, to be able to cool. do these things as well. Yep. So, yeah, Definitely. so please share along. And um, are you as nerdy and excited about the James Webb telescope as we are? And did <laughs> and you watch the launch? And, yeah, that was yeah, ob- absolutely yeah. awesome. It was, that, I, I actually found it well. really inspiring. I, yeah. It was a, yeah, it was amazing. So I'm um, yeah, so looking forward to see what the James Webb telescope will return to us. Mm. Uh, are you a space nerd? Tell us about it. We'd love to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did we do well with the science segment? Tell us that too. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Caroline will be very, uh, yes. she'll be very judgy. Don't worry. She'll tell yeah, us. Yeah. She will tell us. Don't yeah. worry about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love you, Caroline. Hope feeling better <laughs> <laughs> yeah and also um don't forget that uh you can sign up to the star quest insiders club newsletter and you can and to get updates about what your favorite shows are doing so sqpn.com 
slash about slash newsletter. And if you're a North American listener, you can uh, get updates um, on your phone by joining the fan club mailing list by texting uh, the word StarQuest to 66866. Send StarQuest to 66866. Also, as you can follow us on our socials. I know we said get off Twitter, but SQPN, <laughs> SQPN is on Facebook at facebook.com yep. slash StarQuest Media mm-hmm. oh, and on Twitter oh, with the, oh, with the um, handle at SQPN. And don't mm-hmm. forget, we have our own Facebook page for Catholics of Oz and we'd love for you to join us and send your thoughts there as well. Facebook.com slash Catholics of Oz spelt OZ. And you can discuss our episodes there or send us a good old email if you'd like to share something with us at Catholics of Oz at SQPN.com. Lino, thank you so much for being on our first show of 2022. <laughs> Hope that went well for you. <laughs> it did, Lizzie. Thank you very much. And everyone take care and God bless. Absolutely. And once again, I'm Lindsay Sant. Thank you so much for listening to episode 71 of the Catholics of Oz on StarQuest. Have you got wavy, like? wavy lines? They call yeah. them mega <laughs> <laughs> spicy What the whoa? Thanks, Lido. You just recorded our outtake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs>